Hi dear friends welcome to top education in this session we will learn commercial bank that is third chapter of indian financial system ifs so let's begin with it so guys just have a small idea of a commercial bank what is a commercial bank means it accepts deposit from from public and give that same deposit to the companies who are in need of finance or for new venture capital working capital fixed capital and etc so guys this is meaning of commercial bank and commercial bank also helps in savings deposits in doll also now next we have functions of commercial bank so here first you should know the diagram of commercial bank that functions of commercial bank which is accepting of deposits advancing of loans agency function general utility securities so first accepting deposits current account deposit what is current account deposit means it refer it is only for home business purpose this account is open only for business purpose and here old draft facility is provided next we have saving banks account saving bank account is open by every each and every public for their savings okay and fixed deposit account fixed deposit account refers to a person uh it is an account where monthly basis no uh, okay fixed deposit account yes fixed deposit account means for example i am paying 5 lakh to the bank so here bank will give that same amount with interest after few years this is also known as fd yes then we uh, okay this is it and then we have advancing of loan now overdraft as i said this facility is given to current account holders second point okay so advance of advancing of loans so in that point we have overdraft here overdraft is given to that persons who are business who are commercial okay and cash credit cash credit means it is an facility which is provided by bank to the public okay but here they will have some securities and then they will give the loan or cash credit discounting of bills of exchange discounting of bills of exchange it's a big procedure here this is also a facility provided by bank to a public here like uh, a b and c a has purchased from b and b is not able to pay the amount so a needed amount and b does not have so a so b will give a letter of credit and that letter of credit the a will give to c c is bank so bank will pay this is no land known as discounting of bills of exchange direct or term loan direct guys normal loan term loans means for 2 or 3 years loans then we have agency functions so agency functions means transfer of funds collection uh, collects checks undertakes the payment of subscriptions undertakes the to buy and sell securities so guys all related to stock exchanges and all like selling or opening an account of a dmart account dmart account we all guys knows yes and many other facilities providing or giving to a uh, stock exchange person is like this only and general utility service safe keeping the valuable documents account hold like uh, account holders money it should be uh, kept proper collection of credit information regarding customers yes if you are giving credit to that customers then you should have something with okay that uh, 
what they say securities land or building then give your loan so guys this was our functions of commercial bank then we have importance of commercial bank so importance let's know some few points and move further capital formation yes banks helps for capital formation developed saving habit yes every each and per, each and every person now is saving use of checks yes everyone is using checks transfer of fund now paytm google pay all have been cummed so so transfer of fund is very easy influence the interest rate yes interest rate is given at a higher rate also and many other points you can see here okay and next we have here next what we have is structure of commercial bank structure means you should know like what what all comes in this bank for commercial bank we have public and private banks also so guys here in public and private so they are divided into two and uh, which is nationalized and which is not nationalized i think yes for in private sectors who which are the private sectors means the non scheduled banks are known as private sectors and scheduled banks are known as government or public sectors so here uh, which banks how much banks are nationalized is 14 major banks nationalized on 19 july 1969 and six banks nationalized on 5th april 1980 so 20 we have total 20 nationalized banks and this is also a structure and then we have sources of fund of commercial bank now how the commercial bank is getting fund see sources of fund of commercial bank how that commercial bank is receiving amount so here by deposit borrowing from rbi yes they are borrowing from rbi also okay then borrowing from other banks also if they are uh, they are in need of money and uh, interest on loan and advances the interest we are which are the, which they are charging on loans and advances that is also a form of income for them profit from operations which operations guys operations refers to they are investing in some institutions or shares that they will also get profit and and income from agency service agency service as i said agency service refers to what stock exchange services so here they are helping stock exchange services like uh, accepting like uh, uh, selling their shares the customers shares they are selling like they will have some interest and all so this is also known as uh, income from agency service so liquidity of banks and all i think no you will not have this and all questions which questions are important that i will do preparing you yes if not simply i can't no yes then guys the biggest questions i think narasimha committee so guys narasimha committee first which was held or we can say narasimha committee report first which was held in 1991 this report why they have done is there was a problem in banking system rbi also was not able to do something so here this committee was done and this committee have improved some things like reduction in slr and crr what is slr statutory liquidity ratio and crr cash reserve ratio so they have reduction in slr and crr what is slr statutory liquidity ratio the ratio at which the bank have to maintain with rbi and crr cash reserve ratio which the bank have to maintain so they have reduced some uh, percentage on this financing out direct credit program now here they 
uh, in olden days they were not giving credit at easier base but nowadays all are giving credit at quicker way and easiest way interest rate determination now if they are giving high rate of interest then bank will of course they will fall in loss so all the banks have to maintain a percent of interest rate which is which is given to customer then structural recognition of the banking sector yes in this committee structural recognition of banking sector so nobody was uh, all were unknown at that time 1991 all were unknown about this and all banking system and they were not knowing about savings also okay so they have influenced many people and by this people have joined their hands here and establishment of arf tribunal what is asset recover fund i think asset reconstruction fund okay sorry asset reconstruction fund what is this asset recon reconstruction fund means for example i can give you uh, uh like a uh, a one man who run you know from uh, india vijay malya yes sorry vijay malya he had taken many crores of loan and he ran and the bank is not able to cover his loan by any asset because bank had not maintained asset reconstruction fund okay what happened is the all asset were not valued because they the manager and vijay malya had a good connection so this point can be understood by this only and removal of dual control removal of dual dual control means rbi is also controlling and government is also controlling so here government was removed to control that commercial banks only rbi will control the banking system banking autonomy the committee recommended the public sector banks should be free and autonomous in order to pursue competitiveness and efficiency bank must enjoy autonomy so that they can reform the work culture and banking technology so they have given some freedom to them that's it so this was narasimha committee first which was held in 1991 and we have one more committee which is narasimha committee 2 in 1998 why this committee was done is because there was no good reform there was no good feedback of first committee so the second committee came into power strengthening banks in india so here what they decided means every nook and corner every state every village every city should have one bank okay so this strengthening in india the banking system should strengthen in india narrow banking what is narrow banking guys narrow banking means like public sectors okay where weak banks will be allowed to place their funds only in the short term and risk free assets narrow banking c the banks which are established at a rural at a rural places they don't have high rate they don't have high investments so what they have done they will be free they have their narrow banking system okay so capital adequacy ratio in order to improve the enhanced strength of the indian banking system the committee recommended the government should raise the practicable capital adequacy ratio this will further improve the absorption capa capacity also currently the capital adequacy ratio for indian banks is at 9% so adequacy adequacy ratio 
was main ratio guys this type of ratio they have to maintain in their bank if they does not maintain then they are not able to run their banks bank ownership so guys here the bank is given a little bit ownership to to enjoy because in further if anything comes to them they are not able to say yes i don't know sir uh, we are not from this bank we are not owner of this banks and all some feedback have been come i had been taken so the banks had got freedom of ownership also so the banks had been owned by private or public review in banking laws many changes were done in banking laws also how many rules many regulations many procedures many things came into changes so only narasimha committee 2 was successful or we are seeing only so guys ne next we have new technology in banking every kid knows what is atm card what is debit card what is overdraft what is e banking okay so i i i don't think you should all ask me and all okay so what is debit card guys debit card i think some people does not know let's have an idea okay so what is debit and credit card this is meaning or we will know meaning only so debit card refers to what debit card means the amount which we have paid in the bank that we are withdrawing okay and in credit card what happen is the amount the loan which had taken on that credit card that we are withdrawing so credit card debit card in credit card we have to pay certain percent of interest and there is a limit of withdrawals also you can only 10000 20000 70000 there is a limit on that card but debit card how much you have you can uh remove but i think there is only 25000 per day per day you can only remove 25000 from your debit card or shoppings can be done okay so this is only the video and guys know the modern tricks which have been used in banking system like internet banking demat account and all demat account stock exchange as you know okay so guys let me conclude this video by saying please have a thumbs up on this video and share our video to your best friends and help them in their studies so please subscribe our channel top education thank you